All right, so this is my video to give uh, you guys all the information you need on buying a used Golf 7 GTI. I'm literally going to point out all the problems you can possibly have with one of these cars. And these are all things that I change on a weekly basis, a monthly basis on all different GTIs. So, are you ready? Let's go. All right, so this GTI is very nice cars. We like, uh, they got the Verpa, that's what everyone knows, Verpa from the GTIs, you know, the DSGs. So with the, these cars, there are a couple of uh, faults. Let me just uh, open the bonnet here because I wanted to show you a fault, which I'm gonna show you is one of the faults is this bonnet handle. That is one of the faults that you have. But all the faults that GTRs commonly have, all are right under the bonnet. I can literally, I'll point them out for you with my hand. Number one, the most common thing that I change on GTIs is the water pump. It's down inside there. It's electronic and it's got a plug on it and then if it packs up it limits the power and whatever cars overheat and da, 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 da. water pump. Very, very common, usually buy a complete one. You can find an import Chinese one for about three and a half. Usually we get the one from Goldvark and it's about five and a half to six grand. But anyway, so that's number uno, number one. And then very close in second place, number two, is this breather assembly. That thing is very, very common. It causes problems on idle and stuff like that and uh, it makes a whistle sound. That's a very common thing. Then let's move on to number three. The things I've changed quite a few times is another thing. It's called an oil cooler. It basically sits there inside and it's basically a little radiator in the engine and it cools the oil and then it happens to mix in that bottle there you'll have like a brown chocolate then you know the oil cooler needs to be changed and then to change the oil cooler you have to take out the intake manifold and then take out the water pump and then change the oil cooler so i would recommend if you're changing a water pump change the oil cooler at the same time because it's almost in the same place right so where are we now, number three? Well, let's go into number four, because we're still in the engine bay, and that would be the bonnet shock. This is such an irritating thing that nobody ever changes. You end up coming with vice grips and holding up the bonnet. It's like 500 grand at Goldwachen, guys. If your one is busted, don't go to the agents. The agents want like two grand or something for the thing. Go to Goldwachen, they are available. All right, and then the next thing that goes wrong with these things, but not as common, is the turbo. The turbo at the back here, they like to spit wheels, mostly wind tuned. So usually the standard ones don't give a problem, but once you mod them a bit, they are known to blow up the turbo. So that's basically everything in the engine bay besides the actual engine, which is also a common failure point, which is probably one of the most common failure points that you hear about across the range, and that would be the engine, but usually for a whole lot of different reasons. So usually on these engines, what you want to look out for is that there is no noise, that when you start it, it's not loud ticking, and that there's no smoke. Because one of these things can cost, I think it's like 150,000 for a head block and some from VW. And I actually happened to see them on Timu for like 60,000. So crazy, but I mean still 60,000 Rand for an engine. And even if you think, no, no, I'll just get aftermarket parts and build it, even building it costs you in excess of 50, 60 grand. So if you want to buy a 7 GTI, you need to make sure that that part is hunky-dory. So you want to make sure it's been well maintained, it's had regular oil change, and that it's not smoking and noisy. Because that is usually a good indicator. You get there and it's got a lot of ticky-tickies, you know. Use your ears, guys. You need to make sure that the engine is good because if that thing goes bang, it's going to cost you 160 to 100,000 depending on where you go. And don't, don't think I'm talking nonsense. You can ask people for quotes and that will be the quote. 60 to 100 grand to rebuild, repair, change second hand. So check out the engine. Right. So now that, as you can see, is the, all the common faults. Basically just under the bonnet. The, the rest of the car is brilliant, you know. It, there's not much wear and tear stuff. The brakes last. They're nice and light on fuel. Uh, the DSG ones, you have to do a service on the gearbox every now and then. But they're not prone to failure. Most of the guys break them when they from launching them too much. That's, they usually break the transfer case. But that's mostly on the manuals, like the S3s and stuff. You know, usually the DSG launches that nice, smooth DSG. That's what makes them so fast. 
you know, if you have to drop the clutch on the line, the DSG is going to outjump you like a car or two. And so if you want a manual or a DSG, I, I happen to buy a manual because I'm a, I'm an old school guy. I like uh, the feel of changing gears. So I bought a manual, but the DSGs are excellent. You know, you just got to, when you're driving the DSGs, make sure they don't clunk. When you're changing gears, make sure it's a, it's a almost, you shouldn't even feel them changing gears. If there's any clunking or hesitation, that's usually either mountings or there might actually be a fault with the box. Because they do give problems, but uh, not as often as you'd think. So, I think that's about it. So that covers about everything that can go wrong on your GTR. So, if you want to buy a Golf 7 GTR, don't be scared. They are awesome, awesome cars. And let me tell you, the 7 versus the 7.5... The 7.5 has just got a little bit more tech in it, a few small tweaks, slight tweaks on the engine. But for the price point, a 7 normal is just as good. So, if you want to buy it, go right ahead. Check out that one on We Buy Cars. Find that one for 150 You know, give it some love and transform it into your little rocket. Because, trust me, there are so many tuning parts available for this car. You can see mine. It is got nothing it's only got a downpipe see downpipe just so you guys can see it's only got a downpipe and yes it does have a stage one software but i haven't got an intake i haven't got a cooler i haven't got but i can buy all those things you know there is you can buy stage three stuff stage three uh it's crazy some i saw a special somewhere for like seventy thousand for a stage three conversion with the turbo and whatever whatever what so for that sort of money you're getting an extra like 100 kilowatts you know it's crazy so they are so so tunable so if you are in the market for a gtr don't be scared just buy it